Hello there, welcome to GTV Breakfast News. I am Malti Tisaida Sadek. In this half hour, we'll take you to Kumewe and look at the by election. We'll do more politics. We'll bring you education, business, and we'll take you to the foreign front. Follow our live stream at GTV Ghana on Facebook. Uh, you can share the stream, watch us there, leave us your thoughts and comments. Wherever you are in the world, you can watch us on DSTV channel 278. Let's take you to the Ashanti region now. Kumewu's by election in the Ashanti region is today, and four persons, including two independent candidates, are vying for the seat. The winner will complete the term of the late MP for the area, Mr. Philip Baswa, which ends on January 6, 2025. Mr. Philip Baswa died at 8.53 on Monday, March 27, 2023, at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, where he was on admission. He has since been buried. ...themselves have expressed their uh, readiness for the exercise. The, every, virtually everybody who has a stick in what's going to happen tomorrow has expressed up, uh, 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 great uh, preparedness for the exercise to be successful. Ahead of the barrier and the final funeral ride for the late MP, the police moved to ground. The electoral commission officials from the regional uh, office have been interacting with the regional director uh, since uh, I think for about two weeks now, even this morning, I've interacted with him, Mr. Benjamin Banobi. He has continuously, continually expressed his uh, readiness, the readiness of his outfit as the election management body for the country and solely responsible for the conduct of tomorrow's election to go ahead and ensure that everything is successful except to uh, urge all the contesting parties and individuals to also play their part to ensure that nothing untoward happens tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Ghana police says adequate police personnel have been deployed to Kumewu in the Ashanti region ahead of the crucial by-election in the constituency today. A statement released by the service says it has met with stakeholders including the leadership of the New Patriotic Party, the National Democratic Congress and one of the independent candidates to enhance collaboration among all stakeholders and ensure a peaceful election. However, the other independent candidate was unable to honor the invitation to the meeting. The police in the statement signed by the Director of Public Affairs, ACP Grace and Sakrofi, assured the people of Kumeu constituency to go about their normal activities freely, including going out to exercise their civic duty of casting their vote. Let's stay a bit longer in Kumeu. The Minister for Roads and Highways, Mr. Kwesi Mwakwata, has expressed satisfaction with the progress of work on the Kumeu Township roads in the Ashanti region. On an inspection tour, the Minister said the project, which started two months ago, is 80% complete. He refuted claims that today's by-election compelled the government to undertake the project in order for the new patriotic party to retain the seat. His demise, the late MP for Kumeu, Mr. Philip Baswa, pushed for the construction of the 22-kilometer Kumeu town roads. However, a few days after the project was finally awarded for construction, Mr. Baswa passed on. The Minister for Roads and Highways, Mr. Kwesia Mwakwata, was in Kumeu to inspect the progress of work on the town roads. He commended the contractor for the progress of work so far. He allayed the fears of the people that the project will be halted as soon as the by-election in the area on Tuesday, May 23, 2023, is over. Bodo is having his town roads be done. Uh, we are also having his town roads being done. And they will be working up to Wono and the rest. If you just say, you know, uh, town roads, you know, uh, being uh, facelift and, and so on. So is the entire, you know, area. It's not only Kumewu. He reiterated government's determination to complete all road projects across the country. 
Now we're from Kumu. Executives of GBC's unions are calling on the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission to urgently reverse the current decision to discontinue some allowances enjoyed by workers of GBC per their current audit arrangements. According to the union groups, refusal of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission to revert the status quo will leave staff with no alternative than to escalate their displeasure. Per the FWSC arrangements, GBC workers will lose part of their take-home pay starting from the end of this month with a greater percentage of workers to lose about 33 percent of their current salaries a report by gifty aj for starters and in open protest this is how charged the studios of gbc's breakfast show was when leadership of both the junior and senior staff unions appeared for an opportunity to air their grievances about decisions by the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission to cut some allowances of the already difficult salary condition. Reason given is that this is part of the current national payroll monitoring ongoing. This led to a hold on transmission of the breakfast show for about 35 minutes after some consultation with the acting director of television, Mr. George Lomote, following which the union groups allowed the show to continue. In an interview with GBC News, leaders of both the junior and senior staff unions, Mr. Samnat Kevo and Mr. Tahiru Abdul Razak Mohammed, spoke about the reality of the situation. If today our salary, people are work, working from La Paz, Airport Johnson, North Kaneshi, to come to work, eh? and you are now going to take those little allowance from them, you could imagine. You could imagine impact on people's family, marriages, education, health-wise. So such things. Anyone who looks at GBC's workers are as if it is a crime to work in GBC. We deserve better. We have contributed immensely to the democratic dispensation of this country. And GBC should not be taken for granted. If anyone has a personal agenda with GBC, that person to shelve it. GBC is bigger than everybody. GBC is Ghana. The soul of Ghana is GBC. The spirit of Ghana is GBC. As I speak to you, about 33% of my salary has gone down as compared to last as compared to last month. Are you saying, are you saying I should sit down? I should sit down. 33% of my salary. 33, 33, 33 of my salary has gone down. I said I should sit down. Currently, the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, in collaboration with the Internal Audit Agency, is ongoing with a nationwide payroll monitoring exercise with the aim of developing and monitoring allowances and benefit of public service workers. In the case of GBC, the workers were not involved as per standard audit principles, but the corporation was only copied on April 5 about the impending adjustment in salaries, starting with the month of May salary. Per the proposed salary cut, senior staff, for instance, might lose as much as 33% of their current salaries, which is in disagreement with ILO's global salary protocols. Give TAJ, GPC News, Accra. And in an interview, the Director General of GBC, Professor Amin Al Hassan, says GBC has taken all the necessary steps to have the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission and the Controller and Accountant General's Department to rescind the implementation of water terms and end allowances by workers of GBC. He provided documented correspondence from GBC to the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, which was subsequently copied to the Sector Minister, the Minister for Finance, and the Auditor General. Professor Amin Al Hassan spoke to our reporter Gifte J in Accra. The letter came, we responded and made it clear to Fair Wages that these allowances that they are referring to are negotiated allowances, so they should engage public service workers' union. However, management provided contextual information qualifying those allowances and the basis under which they were paid. They were paid based on some of them were based on collective agreement, conditions of service, and so we made reference to those particular documentation and we made copies of those documents and sent them to fair wages. We did that. 
and we expected fair wages to we expect it to respond to our letter. So the implementation that fair wages has instructed controller came to management as a surprise, and we think that uh, even today I engage fair wages and I still insist that a solution is for fair wages to agree to meet with the Public Service Workers Union and GVC management to agree and share a common understanding of what is going on. Still on the Workers' Union of GBC and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, the Commission says claims by unions of the state broadcaster, the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, that the decision to remove some allowances of staff from the payroll is unfair and will make the worker worse off are inaccurate. Now, the Commission boss, Mr. Ben Arthur, said an ongoing nationwide payroll monitoring exercise on staff of GBC identified anomalies Hence, the decision to ensure that only those genuinely entitled to them benefit. Mr. Arthur says staff should expect an increase in some approved allowances this month of May. Staff are taking these allowances by their Category 4 allowance. The question is those who are ineligible are the ones who have been affected. So, yes, it's true that in other areas, People receive this allowance, but they are for a certain category. You rise through the ranks and get to level 23 as a director and see that if these allowances will not be accorded you, per the communication between fair wages and controller, the allowances that have been negotiated for and approved, it will reflect in your pockets. That 82% rise in your non-core allowances you will benefit from it because controller has communicated to us that May is when you begin to receive. For the ineligible ones, it will not reflect. Fair wages is resolved that we will continue to do the payroll monitoring. If there is any individual who is aggrieved, we have the mechanisms for redress. You can write to us, we'll sit down again with you. Let's take you to the central region now. The National Pensions Regulatory Authority has educated workers in the formal and informal sectors on pensions. At Cape Coast, uh, the Minister for Employment and Labour Relations, Mr. Ignatius Bafuiwa, encouraged all workers to join the scheme for a better future during their retirement. The formal sector of the economy is considered the largest, employing about 80 to 85 percent of the country's workforce. The sector's participation in a formal pension scheme arrangement is, however, limited, causing most of the people to live below the poverty line in their old ages. The introduction of the Tier 3 pension scheme established by the National Pensions Act 2008, Act 766, makes provisions for a pension scheme for workers in the informal sector to ensure retirement income security. Farmers, fishermen, commercial drivers, spare parts dealers and traders can sign on to the scheme. To ensure all persons in the sector understand the scheme better, the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, has embarked on a campaign at the markets, mosques and churches at Cape Coast, Mankasim and Aguna Swedru. The team also visited some educational institutions such as the Commander College of Education and Cape Coast Technical University. The chief executive of the NPRA, Mr. Hayford Crofi, explained the rationale behind the exercise. The new Pensions Act has also opened up the opportunities for even people who are in the informal sector to join pensions. So we would like to appeal to all Ghanaians who are of the working age, from the age of 15 to the time you retire. Please, one day you will retire. And if you retire, how are you going to live your life beyond work? It's therefore important for every Ghanaian to make a little contribution. So as they say, you save for the rainy day. When you retire and you don't have the energy and the strength to work and you don't earn in any income, this is what you're going to fall on. 
Let's do business and finances. The president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akin Wunmi Adesina, is calling for a rethink in the global investment community about the perception of risk in Africa. He says from a study by Moody's, Africa has the second lowest of risk in infrastructure investment in the world. At a news conference prior to the opening of the African Development Bank annual meetings at Sham el-Sheikh in Egypt, Dr. Adesina emphasized that Moody's study proves that the the risk in Africa is mere perception and not real. The African Development Bank is dedicating its 2023 annual meeting scheduled from the 22nd to the 26th of May in Sham El Sheikh, Egypt, to mobilizing private sector financing for climate and green growth in Africa. For the AFDB, the stakes are high, especially in the midst of global multiple crises, including hikes in food and fuel prices, as well as climate change. But the bank is happy that it has what it takes to achieve inclusive growth and sustainable development, which will lift millions out of poverty and provide a better future for its citizens. And at a news conference, the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akumi Adesina, said private sector investment is crucial to mitigating the negative effect of climate change on Africa. The issue is not risk. The issue is how you manage risk. There's risk in everything. So risk should not be a reason why you're not making something. It's a risk return world. It's managing your downside risks and optimizing on the upswing of it in terms of returns. Africa will need $2.7 trillion by 2030 the finance climate change needs. Financing is a critical issue that will dominate discussions at the annual meetings of the African Development Bank underway as Russia in Egypt. Africa's capacities to mobilize domestic resources are limited partly due to poor diversified economies, difficult access to international capital markets, the persistence of illicit financial flows, and above all, disproportionate concentration of global resources in other regions. The African Development Bank is calling for the concentration of official development assistance to Africa and more importantly to be given to multilateral banks like the AFDB to be able to distribute or leverage on these resources to enable Africa live through some of the challenges it is facing now. For GBC News, Edward Nyako reported from Shamashi, Egypt. From Egypt, let's take you to the international front in Nigeria. The presidential election petition court, PPEC, on Monday in Abuja dismissed the application by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the Labour Party for live broadcast of court proceedings. A unanimous decision, the five-member panel held that the order sought by the petitioners lacked merit and was outside the scope of the petition. The judges held that televising of proceedings was not provided for in any law. They held that the court was created by the constitution and operated under the law by the court of appeal. The court said the undue pressure of allowing cameras into the courtroom should be avoided as the impact it would have on witnesses could not be predicted. The court began hearing a petition by several opposition candidates in Nigeria to annul all progressives Congress Bola Tinubu's victory in the February 2023 presidential election. Presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and the People's Democratic Party candidate, Atiku Abubakar, filed separate suit to challenge the ruling party's victory. Mr. Abubakar called the result a rape of democracy after receiving 29% of the vote, while Mr. Obi, who received 25%, told supporters they had been robbed of victory, vowing to prove it to Nigerians. The country's election commission declared Mr. Tinubu the winner of the election in a televised broadcast after he garnered 37% of the votes. But the two main opposition candidates rejected the results, questioning Mr. Tinibu's qualifications and alleging that results from the country's 177,000 polling stations were tampered with. 
Health International Front health officials in South Africa have confirmed that a cholera outbreak has killed at least 15 people. More than 100 others have shown symptoms, including diarrhea and vomiting after drinking contaminated water in Hammam's Kraal, a township north of the capital, Pretoria. Officials have urged people to stop drinking tap water. Frustrated residents chased away the regional mayor when he attempted to visit a hospital treating victims. Last month, the emergency services in Johannesburg urged people to avoid performing traditional and baptism rituals in rivers and streams following another cholera outbreak. South African health experts have raised concerns about further infections in areas with poor sanitation and sewage running through the streets. And Frederick Kuja joins us on the phone line now with details of the weather update for today. Good morning, Frederick. Good morning, Marcus. Fair weather conditions this Tuesday across Ghana. Well, uh, mostly uh, for the entire country, we expect passing cloud weather to prevail. Okay. Morning to be However, from late afternoon to the evening, we expect the weak wind storm, which is propagated um, from the western portions of. Nigeria to enter into our country, so places within the forest, but at its port region, I would say that through Ashanti, Eastern, or the Western and the uh, Western North regions are likely to be affected by this big risk of hazard. Those of us along the coast are likely to have some cloudiness with some possible rainfall activity from uh, mid afternoon to the evening. Temperatures will generally range from 22 degrees Celsius um, to about 36 degrees Celsius across the entire country. Right. Thank you so much, Frederick Kujo, giving us those updates as to how the weather will pan out. And you did hear him say that a rainstorm is moving in from Nigeria, engulfing uh, the OT and the Volta area later towards the afternoon. And that's it for GCV Breakfast News. I am Malti Tisaida Sadek. My costume is by No Rush Collections. You can find her on social media everywhere. Up next, GCV Breakfast Clinic is coming up with a discussion on febrile seizure. And then Legon School of Midwifery and Nursing will also be in the studio. The issue about the COVID-19 tax or levy will also be discussed on the show. I'll be back at 7 with sports. Stay with us.